What if I told you that every single day, massive ships play chicken? In the classic example of the game, two cars are on a road approaching a single track bridge. Each continues at speed in the hope that the other one will swerve out of the way, making themselves the chicken. If both cars continue straight, however, they will collide and annihilate each other. Well, what if, instead of small cars, we have cargo ships carrying thousands of tons of fuel or chemicals, and instead of the bridge, we have a narrow channel where both ships need to be in the middle? As the distance closes, both ships start to get more nervous until they reach a critical point where they both chicken out. They each alter course to starboard at the last minute, heading towards the banks on opposite sides of the canal. It looks like they're both going to go aground, but then miraculously, they bounce off just as the ships draw level. They got away with that bit, but now it looks like they will instead run aground against the other side of the channel. Just as it looks like all hope is lost, their sterns draw level and the second bit of magic occurs. The forces between the sterns suck them together, drawing them back to the centerline from where they can safely continue their passage. Okay, I may have overdramatized it a little, but what you've just seen is an actual shipping maneuver based on the game of chicken. It's actually called, appropriately, the Texas Chicken, and it occurs in the Houston Ship Channel, which runs from the Gulf of Mexico right the way up to the city of Houston in Texas. If there was just one ship, it could happily travel up the centre of the channel all the way to its berth, but as it's around 50 miles long, reserving the channel for one-way traffic isn't exactly realistic. No, you need to find a way for ships to pass. The channel itself is physically wide enough to fit two ships side by side, but when the ships are that big, they can't actually navigate down one side of a narrow channel. Do you remember the Ever Given? I haven't covered that incident on this channel yet, although I did put a video out in the casual navigation community at the time. In fact, I've recently upgraded the community, so if you enjoy my content, you should definitely come and check it out. You'll get exclusive access to a community where you can get help learning about maritime subjects or just feeding your curiosity. Higher tiers also get bonus content like two exclusive video podcasts every month, free access to my personal image library, and now I'm introducing a monthly Q&A session for any questions about the channel, the industry, or just a little help with your studies. I'm not going to tell you that I need members to sustain this channel, but I'm not going to lie to you either. Every member does help me create content by reducing my reliance on ads and sponsors, so I'm genuinely grateful for every member that joins. Anyway, I got off topic a little there as I was just saying how the Ever Given is probably the best recent example of a thing called bank effect and interaction. In open water, we have pressure areas that develop around a ship's hull. There is a high pressure area around the bow where the water is heaping up as the ship is pushing it out of the way. Along the sides of the ship, there are low pressure areas culminating in the very lowest pressure area just in front of the propeller. The final bit is the extreme high pressure just behind the propeller where the water is being pushed backwards, propelling the ship ahead. In open water, these pressure zones don't really change much, but when things become more confined, interesting effects happen. If I introduce a bank along the ship here, the high pressure area at the bow is going to tend to push the bow away from the bank. Similarly, at the stern, the low pressure area is going to tend to suck the stern towards the bank. This is bank effect. With a single bank on one side, it will tend to turn you away from the bank. When you introduce a second bank, however, bank effect will turn you towards that side instead. This is the best estimate of what happened to the Ever Given. An initial gust of wind blew her sideways towards one bank. Bank effect then kicked in, turning her towards the other side. In an attempt to steady up, they will have applied starboard helm, but as she was already heading off towards the other bank, she started interacting with that too. The bow will have been pushed off to starboard, the stern will have been sucked to port, and maybe the rudder wasn't able to get over in time to compensate, so she ran aground. With a narrow channel and a large vessel, the only way is to navigate in the centre of the channel and attempt to keep all the forces in balance. That's fine, until two ships travelling in opposite directions both want to use the centre of the channel. If they each move to one side to let the other pass, bank effect kicks in and risks pushing them into the path of the other vessel. If you attempted to correct it with the rudder, the positive pressure at the bow and the rudder movement at the stern will tend to walk the ship sideways back into the centre of the channel. It's no good. Instead, you want to time the manoeuvre and work with the bank effect. Stay in the centre of the channel until pretty much the last minute. Then, and only then, alter course to starboard and move off the centre line of the channel. As your bow approaches the side, bank effect will act as a cushion, straightening you up. You're aiming to be straight just as the other vessel approaches. The pressure area from the other vessel's bow then counteracts the bank effect, 
keeping you straight as your bows pass. As you continue past the other vessel, you'll start to feel the interaction forces again, not only from the bank, but also from the lower pressure areas along the side of the other vessel. Once your bow is past the stern of the other ship, bank effect alone is acting to push it back towards the centre of the channel. Your stern, however, is still under the influence of the forces generated by the other vessel as well as the bank. Bank effect is trying to suck your stern in, but the low pressure areas around the other ship are overpowering it and acting to draw your stern out, sucking the two vessels together. Done correctly, as your two vessels draw clear of one another, you should both be back in the centre of the channel, free to continue your passage. To the outside observer, it looks as if two massive ships were literally heading straight towards each other in a reckless game of chicken that might have devastating consequences. In reality, however, communication between the two vessels turned it from a game of chicken into a pre-planned manoeuvre. In the traditional game, there are two possible actions for each person, straight or swerve. When both go straight, both lose. When one swerves and one goes straight, the one that went straight is declared the winner and the other the loser or chicken. If both decide to swerve, then no one wins outright, so no one gets bragging rights, but everyone survives. The key is that you don't know what the other person is going to do. Logically, they should swerve as it will keep them alive, but if logic says the other should swerve, then why not stay straight yourself and claim an overall victory? This is where communication comes into it, turning a Texas chicken from a game into a pre-planned maneuver. You've both agreed to swerve, eliminating the possibility of annihilation, but also eliminating the possibility of overall bragging rights. When it comes to tens or hundreds of thousands of tons of deadly cargo, however, bragging rights are irrelevant. Although it looks like a game of chicken, it's actually just two professional crews utilising the physics of interaction to best pass one another in a narrow channel.